what up nerds and welcome back to to the edge of the sky so today we are going to be jumping into chapter six which is called zenith uh, we are going to be infiltrating a meeting for our enemy party so let's just go ahead and start i'm on the ground face down in a pool of my own blood oh we're off to a great start sharp searing pain is pulsating through my skull all I can see are the brightly glowing LEDs of Zero's boots in the dim room. They seem somehow like the light of hope itself, keeping the darkness at bay. Oh my god. How did this turn to shit so fast? Where did I go wrong this time? My scattered brain tries to replay the events of tonight in an effort to understand. It was the night of the mission. Five was to infiltrate a Kairos meeting in order to find out where the group had relocated to. Zero and I were there to support him, just in case he needed the backup. Zero, Five, and I had met Six on site as he slipped out of the shadows to brief us. Seven, good to see you're back on the job. Yeah, it's good to be back. I won't mess up this time, I promise. <laughs> I feel a hand on my shoulder as the rain pounds down around us. You'll do well. Six turns to Five, who is dressed in full Kairos gear. So will you, Five. Find out where they are located, even if you have to go with them to their location. Yes. You know what to do. I really hope it doesn't come to that. It comes to much worse, it sounds like. Six claps five on the shoulder and gives a nod to Zero. You're in charge tonight, Zero. Zero nods. I won't interfere unless necessary. I trust your judgment, Zero. I believe in the abilities of all three of you. Think Six. Without further conversation, Six waves a hand, walking off into the night. I don't know where he's going, only that he's going to be nearby. Well, I'm off. See you guys later. Five walks off in the direction of the building Kairos is holding their meeting in. I couldn't shake my worry this time, watching with Zero as he disappeared into the night. And it turned out, it was for good reason. Five was in there for less than three minutes. Before he started screaming, oh no. We had chosen some discreet shadows of a building outside to hide in and monitored Five's OFV. The meeting seemed to be going normally at first. The Cairo subleader seemed to be leading the meeting as we'd hoped. Most people were in cloaks or in Kairos uniforms already. Apparently, Kairos would give them their uniforms to potential recruits ahead of time, both as incentives to join and in order to vet them more easily. There's also the possibility that Kairos has something that allows them to track the people they gave the clothes to within them. Welcome to the revolution. You are those who would, who would awaken from Faze's sleep. As expected, the subleader began talking about Kairos' goal to end Faze for good. But he didn't get far into his speech because of what we didn't expect. Two of the people attending suddenly tore off their cloaks. Prepare for trouble. <laughs> Make it double. What? Do we have fucking Team Rocket here? Is that what's going down? Shocked, I switched out of OFE to look at Zero. Seriously? Why is Icarus showing himself now? And I'm pretty sure that's Artemis, the new right hand of the dragon from what I read. Why would a Kairos leader risk showing themselves at a recruitment meeting? I'm not sure, but this might be a trap. Should we go in? No, not yet. We need to see why they're here first. Zero's plan makes more sense than rushing in, so I turn back to the OFV. I knew you could do it, baby. Artemis glares at Icarus, and I can only guess he's talking about their intro. <laughs> Operative 5, you're coming with us. Uh-oh. Ooh, that line sounds so villainy. I'm living out my dreams right now. Did you really just say that out loud? Suddenly, the OFV shakes. We hear a grunt from Five. What are you doing? Hey, no one told you guys to attack. The camera spins around suddenly. Huh? Then the screen shakes violently again. And goes black. Five? Five! Five, are you okay? Report! The only response is Five's panic screams. Shit. We gotta go in. Six, we're going. Wait, I'm getting some kind of... Six's voice cuts off strangled. Six? Six? What do you mean to wait? Our cries are met only by silence. Wait, let's try switching into operative field view again. 
I reach up to change the setting on my arrow, but Zero's gloved hand stops me. No time. Let's go. Zero drops his hand and starts running. After a moment of hesitation, I dust off after him. We don't get far before we hear another voice in our comms. Team Dev, stand down. Huh? Nine? We both start to slow down at Nine's commanding voice, but neither of us stop running. Why? Nine's voice is strained and breaking as he says the next words. Sudden orders from the top. Uh-oh. They say to leave it. <sighs> leave it? Leave five to die? What the fuck? Yeah, Zero, I'm, I'm with you. What the fuck? I know. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what this is all about, but I'm standing in the general's office right now. This is an order even I can't override. My head spins as I try to understand what's happening. But Zero grabs my hand and starts running faster. Nine. I don't understand what's going on. But I know I won't leave five alone here, no matter what. Sorry. Zero. Zero looks back at me as we run. Cut off your comm link to nine seven. What? Pretty sure that nine is tied up in some political bullshit. But us, we're right here. Five is depending on us. Are you just going to let our teammate die? Zero's piercing question strikes through the heart of me. I have no idea why I was hesitating. The reason I signed up for FaZe was to help people. I can't let someone die if there's something I can do about it, especially someone who is relying on me to help them. I do as Zero instructed, cutting off Nine's distress's plea. I nod at Zero. Let's go. As we're running through, again our calm links spring into life. Two unexpected voices come on. Guys, shit is going down. No shit, three. What do you mean? There's a coup de tot. Coup de tot. Uh huh, G Dragon. <laughs> going on right now at HQ. Three is right. And they think five is a traitor. <laughs> you have to save. Eight's voice cuts out. Call disconnected. Disconnected from Phantasm Network. I look at Zero in utter panic, but his intense, strong willed eyes serve to focus me. I've been disconnected too. We'll figure it out later. We have to save five. I nod, and with no more interruptions, we head for the meeting location. I don't know what I was expecting to find, but it wasn't this. This shitstorm. There are maybe 20 or 30 Kairos recruits, way more than we expected. But what's more, they're all fighting. Each other. Not just each other, though. Zero rips off his hood, staring at the disturbing scene in front of us. Five! Our arrival into the fray causes everyone to turn towards us. For an instant, I catch a glimpse of Five in the middle of the floor, sprawled out. Blood stains his clothes, and his body, battered and swollen face, is nearly unrecognizable. Oh no. Five! Help him! It's as if our screams were the... It's as if our screams were the catalyst in a power keg. The entire room explodes into action again. Zero plunges in the crowd so quickly that I instantly sight of him. I lunge forward trying to reach five, but Kairos recruits fly at me. I don't understand. They seem to all stop fighting each other and grab me instead. I don't get it. But it doesn't stop their brutal attack on the unconscious five. What? They kick his body and take out vibro knives. The hell? Yeah, this is weird. Using my full strength, I punch people out of my way left and right. Is going on? Yeah, this is a whole bunch of... No. But it's not enough. Blades sink into Five's flesh. There are too many of them. I feel myself being dragged down as several people jump onto my back. Five! My knees hit the ground hard and my arrow flies off. The last view before I hit the ground is that of Artemis breaking free from Icarus who had holding her who was holding her back. She definitely leaps towards Five into the fray. Damn it, Artemis, get back here! I wonder why it looks like she was trying to save Five. But I'm not allowed time to think. My head was shoved into the ground hard with a sickening cra- Oh, shit. Fireworks explode in my vision as intense, nauseating pain rolls through my body. I feel my body being crushed by more and more weight as people jump on- What the fuck? A head injury. I try never to take those, but these guys. They really have it out for me. I realize that my arrow is on the floor, split in two in front of me. Tears well up in my eyes, and I'm sure it's from the pain or that my precious aro is broken. I bet it's the pain. <laughs> I reach out to pick up the pieces, but a shoe stomps down on it and my hand, crushing the pieces. 
In moments, I'm assaulted by so much pain I can barely discern that I'm being kicked and punched the way Five was. I can't breathe. I can't move. I've lost my arrow. Even though the blood falling down my face is obscuring my vision. My body is initiating a full-blown panic attack in the last attempt to save me. But as my vision begins to dim, I know that the adrenaline I'm feeling is going to be wasted. That's when I hear the familiar hum of a vibro vibroblade vibro knife. It's then I know for certain that I'm going to die. What happened five moments ago replays vividly in my mind. How did this turn to shit so fast? Where did I go wrong this time? Was it wrong to think I could do something right? Was it wrong to think that even I could save someone? I feel my strength leaving me, but that's when I see him. Zero. Zero picks up one by my throat and throws him into another guy. He spins around and kicks another guy in, in two, four more. A woman tries to jump on his back, but he smoothly slips out of the way and chops her in the back of the neck. Two more come from behind, but he elbows one and grabs the arm of the other, flipping him over onto the ground. Not a single one rises after meeting with any part of Zero's body. Slowly, Zero is single-handedly clearing out the room. Rage distorts his strong features as he becomes a force of devastation. His unfettered will to survive, to change our fates. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And he's headed straight for me. Our eyes meet, and I feel hope fill my, flood my body. Zero. I'm coming to help you, Seven. Don't die on me. You have to survive. Zero's determination stirs something deep inside of me. The will to live. I won't. I won't leave you. I want to be in half... I want to be even half as strong as you. So even if everything went to hell... Even if we lost the battle, I want to keep trying as long as there's even a single bit of life left in me. If there's even one chance out of a million that there's a future, then the weight on top of me disappears, and I know what that means. They've moved to deliver the killing blow. With the last of my strength, I roll over just as a man was swinging his vibro knife down. It plunges into the ground next to me. He loses his balance and falls towards me. Still lying down, I manage to catch him with both hands before he falls on top of me. For a second, we're staring face to face, my tooth grit as I keep his weight from crushing me. There's a time and a place to die, but this isn't mine. I kick him straight into the fucking ceiling. I don't remember what happened after that, but I know that I survived. And that's all that matters for now. Holy moly, okay, let's just jump right into seven. Let's let's go liberate. <laughs> I lie down, looking at the infinite starry sky. It's one I'm very familiar with. I'm home. Duh. <laughs> Everywhere's home when you're a drifter. Everywhere and nowhere, that's right. I hold up my hand, pretending to touch the stars. There were so many nights like these growing up. Just you and me, staring at the stars, talking about our future. Nish, you grew up so much. Things couldn't stay the same forever, sis. You know that. I miss you. I miss mom and dad and everyone in the clan. Why are you talking like this? You should. You sound like an old lady that gave up all of her hopes and dreams. I feel, I feel stuck lately. Like I keep making the wrong choices to get to where I want to be. I chased my dream and I made it. I made it all the way to Olympia. So why does it feel like I can't get any closer to it? It's like a mirage that keeps disappearing. Probably because what you're chasing isn't what you really want. Maybe you're right. The dream we think we want isn't the reality we really want. What we really want is usually right within our grasp. We just have to reach out with all we have, even if it's uncomfortable. Even if others think we're fools, our hearts know what's right for us. Reach out and take the destiny that was truly meant for you. my eyes to an unfamiliar ceiling. Nish. He sounded much wiser than he usually acts, but I haven't dreamed about him in so long. Maybe I did now because I almost... Uh, huh? I set up in a rush. Where the hell am I? I wandered out into the hall, my entire body aching and sore. My head had some kind of large bandage under my hair, but it doesn't hurt as much as I thought it would. Someone had to have treated me. Gave me painkillers, too. I have no idea where I am, but it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like FaZe. In fact, 
It looks more like a... a school? A really old one, though. As a drifter, I didn't actually attend any schools like this one, but I've seen them online. I'm so confused right now. I stop walking when I hear a voice coming from nearby. Having nowhere to hide, I settle for flattening myself against a wall. At least I tried. Two people come into view. It hurts seeing you tear up your... <laughs> it hurts seeing you tear up your room like that, just for a... N just for a note some dude gave you years ago. I was tearing it up because I want to throw it away. Huh? Uh, uh, oh. Throw it away? Yes. Are you sure you want to do that? That five guy seems super important to you. I didn't even know he was five. So, it was 100% your soft heart that had you risking your life? You know, I can't stand people getting hurt like that. And I didn't know that guy from back then was five either. Icarus whistles. You've got some serious drama, baby girl. <laughs> Artemis and Icarus are now directly in front of me, and I feel awkward as hell. Crap, they're gonna see me. At the same time, their eyes slide over to me, standing flat against the wall. Uh, what the hell are you doing here? Doing there. Uh, hey, just walking around and stuff? Totally not eavesdropping. <laughs> Artemis' gaze seemed to pierce into my soul. Scary. Wait, I need to ask about five. No matter how scared I am of the answer. Um, so did, you know, what happened to Five? Five? He's alive, I guess. I guess. Poor guy is really a mess. I did what I could at the time, but... I see. Thank you for helping him. Is he... going to pull through? I don't know, honestly. Oh. We all fall silent, and the awkward atmosphere transitions into a depressing one. I have so many questions, like, why the hell are we in an old school? But I can't stand the weirdness of conversing with the enemy. Anyway, have fun being weird with walls or whatever. We got shit to do. Icarus grabs Artemis' hand and the two disappear down the hall. I let out a sigh of relief. But then I realize I still don't even know why I'm here or if Kairos is trying to kill me or what. I mean, I guess not since they did try. Since they didn't try, but I have no freaking clue what's going on. But what about Zero? Is he okay? With nothing else to do, I begin walking again. Although the hallways are full of Kairos people rushing around, the only glance at me and continuing on their way. It's freaking me out being surrounded by people who have been trying to kill me up until now. It's all I can do to hold it together. I just need to find someone who can explain what the hell is going on or at least find my way out of here. Thankfully, it isn't that long before I bump into someone else. Well, well. Someone's feeling bold, strolling around unknown enemy territory. I... Don't worry, we were already headed to pick you up. We. Oui. Zero steps out from behind Temperance. Relief floods me at seeing a familiar face. Zero. I'm so glad he's alright. I notice various bandages on him though, including a bloodied one on his hand. Oh no, he's hurt. He got those trying to help me. I'm glad you're okay, Seven. I was watching you rest on the monitor. You've been asleep for two days. Two days? But once you were up, you didn't waste any time moving, did you? Would we'll never imagine that you'd just been injured, much less in a coma. I pout, not really knowing how to respond. Isn't it normal that someone would want to know what's going on? Temperance laughs. You're like a curious puppy. <laughs> you both are, in a way. This one had a lot of questions. Thought I'd give you- I th thought I'd gather you both up and answer them at once. How kind of you. Indeed, you're quite lucky to have us have stumbled upon the most informed person in Kairos. But standing in the halls is no fun. Shall we make some tea and discuss the nefarious workings of the underworld? <laughs> you know what? I'm liking her. I'm really liking her. I don't know what to say to that. Temperance just smiles mysteriously and walks past me. I look at Zero, who shrugs, hands in his pocket, and walks after Temperance. It seems clear that we both have no choice but to follow her. Reluctant, but much feeling safer with Zero here, I move to join them. Ooh. Temperance brings us to an empty room that looks like it used to belong to an administrator. But all I care about is who is there. Nish? Sis! Nish stands up walking over to me and wrapping me in a gentle hug. I'm so glad you're safe. After my dream, I feel too stunned to react for a few seconds, but remembering how I could have never seen him again at his home. I hug him back tightly. 
Temperance is down on the desk next to a vengeance style tea set. Taking one of the cups, she sips some tea. Help yourselves if you'd like. I let go of Nish and look dubiously at Temperance. I don't think either Zero or me would be stupid enough to try a drink from Temperance. That's what I'm thinking, but Zero walks to the tea set and pours a cup. Do you want some? Seriously? It's not poison, sis. I sigh and reluctantly take the teacup. Zero pours another for himself as Temperance, Temperance quietly chuckles. First off, if you haven't figured it out yet, the school is one of our temporary hideouts. And honestly, even I don't know hap I don't know what happened for certain back there at that meeting. I know that has to be your second question, but my agents are still out there gathering data. It's an ongoing situation. But I can't tell you with certainty that the men who attacked you weren't Cairo's operatives. But Artemis and Icarus were there. Wasn't it supposed to be a recruitment meeting? Yes and no. It was actually designed to be a trap. You're just talking in circles. Let me finish. It was designed to be a trap to lure you in, yes, but there was to be no bloodshed. Certainly none of the caliber that you all experienced. The meeting was a ruse, but Artemis and Icarus were meant to bring you all back here. There weren't supposed to be more than a few of our guys pretending to be recruits. Something, I don't know what, went awry. It's not like Kairos to make mistakes, so whomever we're dealing with has to be of a high caliber. And there aren't many organizations at that level. One could argue that it's just Kairos and FaZe. You're, you're saying that FaZe attacked us? That's ridiculous. Is it? Seven. Remember 3 and 8? I think back to what 3 and 8 said. Coup d'etat. They think 5 is a traitor. How 9 tried to stop us. I feel like I'm losing my balance. My head is spinning. I stumble and Nish reaches out to study me, but Zero is quicker. Take it easy, sis. You're not fully recovered. I look up into Zero's concerned eyes and I know he understands the stress I'm feeling. How sick I feel is more related to how lost I am now, right now than anything else. FaZe told you that they believed your five is a traitor, don't, don't they? I knew it. We've known that they thought that for a while. Temperance takes another sip of her tea. Do you know why I joined FaZe? Huh? That's... I look at Zero, but he looks just as close as me. I take it you don't, then. Well, there's no point in hiding it now, especially when he might not even make it. How casually, to sh how casually she talks about life and death. She swirls around her teacup absentmindedly. Once upon a time, there was a handsome young man named Ko Daehyun. Born to a Hawaiian mother and a Korean father, Daehyun grew up in a loving family. Faye scouted him in high school, seeing how talented he could be as a shifter. But carefree Daehyun had no interest in being a secret agent. He refused and dodged them every time. But Faye always gets what they want. Five came home to an empty house after school one day. Empty all except for law enforcement and one phase agent investigating. He was told that his entire family had been kidnapped and most likely killed by a local serial murderer. They left him with no other option that, than to join or starve on the streets. Oh my fucking god, that is horrible. I gasped softly. Did FaZe really? But Dayhyun still didn't want to join FaZe. At least not until they told him something sometime later that his fi family might still be alive. But they also made sure to let him know that their resources, that their resources to find them, well, they'd only be available to him after he joined Phase and did well enough as an operative. Oh my God, the lengths, the lengths that they have went through. This is ridiculous. But no worries, Daehyun did well, extraordinarily well. Looking at statistics, he's the best operative FaZe has. Yet, they didn't offer him the chance to find his family. Don't you wonder why that was? But Daehyun, he was never quite suited to the obedient operative life, was he? He went out when he wasn't supposed to, despite the fact it could jeopardize his identity. And he did things with people he wasn't supposed to. Spoke to people he wasn't supposed to, about things he wasn't supposed to reach for. Yet, including Kairos, who might have just happened upon one of his family members. Daehyun was going to meet us soon to discuss what I found. Who I found. Who you found? Did you find one of Five's family? 
what I found was a tortured lab experiment of Dr. Park. I just needed Five's confirmation on her identity. She She's still alive? Technically, yes. I rescued her myself. I couldn't stand to let someone else suffer the way I did. But that girl has already gone through so much. Nish pinches his eyes shut with his fingers, and I know he must be tearing up. Nish, what have you seen? Nish opens his eyes, and I can see rage behind them. Dr. Park's immoral travesties must be stopped. Nish punches the dust Temperance is sitting on. She is not God, and human lives are not her playthings. A heavy silence provides the space between the four of us. Neither Zero nor I look at either one of them in the eye. Then I notice that Zero's fists are clenched, and he's trembling. Is he crying? Or... FaZe doesn't care about anyone but their goals. They've abandoned you. It's not just Dehyun they think is a traitor, but you too. Me? My intel says that they know about your meeting with me. There's no way they're going to let that slide. Ayuna, please join Kairos. Wow, just <laughs> fucking straight to the punch, but I mean, looking at everything that we've just learned, and them leaving Five and I to die and stuff, I mean, Kairos is looking pretty fucking good right now. I look down from the desperation in Nish's voice. It's true that the things that Temperance just said, that Nish just said, are beyond terrible. But they haven't given me any proof. They, she, <sighs> we're dumber than a box of fucking rocks. All we want is fucking proof. But we just, we have our own proof. They came through and told us to leave five. They said there's a coup d'etat going in phase. They were going to leave us. Like, what What more do we fucking need? We have Nish here. We have Four who told us our, his story. We have Dehun who kind of started telling us about him. And then Zero, obviously, is one of the experiments as well. What fucking more do we even fucking need? This is ridiculous. Stop being dumb. And I still don't know if Nish has been brainwashed by these. What? Are you serious? Everything is before your fucking eyes and you think he's brainwashed? What the fuck is wrong with you? And what's more? My eyes are immediately drawn to the greenery within. Without thinking, I head straight for the plants. I gently touch them, trying to see if they're real or fake. I see you like the plants. Those are my favorites. A low, soothing voice comes from behind me. I spin around to see who I guess is Doctor in her chair. I'd passed by her not even noticed, so single-mindedly focused on the plants. Ah, yes, I do. I'm sorry. I'm just not used to seeing them here. No need to be sorry. That's what they're there for. Would you like to have a seat? Doctor Sadik gestures to the other chair and I quickly seat myself. I'm Doctor Ella Sadik. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to see you. But it's a pleasure to meet the newest member. How are you? I wanted eight to have someone that would love him for just being eight. Not because of his looks or because of the way we were persuaded. Five, I think you're too honest sometimes. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Eight needs to relax more. And Monarch loved him the moment they met. He snuggled up in his arms and never wanted to leave. Eight suddenly clasped his hands together. He did! He purred and purred and purred. He was the cutest thing, so small. <laughs> and when I tried to hold him up for a bit, he got angry. He was like, no, this is my human. Ah, I fell in love at first sight with my kitty. What is this cuteness suddenly? Ugh, I feel my heart is going to explode into rainbows. That's such a sweet story. I can't wait to meet him. Next time we hang out, I'll try to bring him, okay? Five turns to me and whispers, it is really cute sometimes. So... Please don't be mad at eight. <laughs> but thank you for trusting me with this. I had no idea he's carrying so much pain. And it's no secret around here, and I just wanted you to hear it from me. I look up before, trying not to tear on myself, wishing I could do something for him. Can I give you a hug? It's not much, but it's all I can do. Four looks off to the side for a moment, shifting his body towards me as he turns back. He looks a little stiff, but he drops his arms to his side. Okay. His voice is quiet, and yet I hear him perfectly fine. I'm shocked that he's actually letting me, but I throw my arms around him without hesitation. 
I give him my best hug, squeezing him tight. Four awkwardly pats me on the back, but it's endearing somehow. He's trying, even if he isn't real good at it. That's when I realize something is poking me inside. I pull back and look down in confusion at Four's jacket. Oh, here. Four pulls out a can of caramel latte. I reach out to grab the drink and realize that it's really warm. Did you just get this before you came up here? I got it on the way here. Really? I don't think I've seen a vending machine anywhere all that close, but maybe I missed one. The silver-haired man grins and gracefully pushes himself up into a sitting position. There isn't any place I can get into. I'm way too tired for this. I glare at the strange intruder that doesn't answer any of my questions. He laughs in response. I answer one of them, didn't I? The cheeky grin on his face seems to only widen at that. But before I can say anything else, he quickly jumps to his feet and comes to stand in front of me. He looks down at me and that smile is still plastered onto his face. I'm six. Six? So he's another teammate of mine then. I remember reading that my teammates are nine, zero, four, six, five, eight, and three. Welcome to the team, Seven. He gives a much gentler smile this time. What do you mean? In the past few weeks, Four got hurt, and so did you. Failed missions, they affect the entire team. And ultimately, a member of my team fails and meant it was my fault. And you and Four were punished for it. So this is the least I can do. I start to open my mouth to argue with Nine, but he quickly changes the subject. Please tell me how you've been doing. You've had it the hardest all of all of us, being so new and thrown into so many difficult situations so fast. I want to lend an ear to try and help quell any of the confusion might, you might be having. Well, now that I've actually been given the chance to talk to someone all of a sudden, I feel awkward about it. How am I supposed to just blurt out the doubts I've been having to the leader of the entire team? Please trust in me. I hope you can relax and be honest with me. I know I haven't been doing that well in communicating with you, but I want to make up for that. I hope you'll give me a chance to help. If you don't know where to start, the beginning is always good. How have you been since we spoke before the Kairos invasion? So what did you want to talk to me about? In all honesty, it's more like I wanted to talk you to talk to me. Nine mentioned to me that you were having a hard time lately. I'd been lying if I said I knew how difficult it was to adjust to phase. My father had has always worked here, so I've always been in and out. But I thought because of how long I've been acquainted with FaZe and hoped that perspective could be useful to you. Mm. Besides that, we haven't really gotten to know each other. I thought being familiar with all of your teammates might make you more comfortable. Our eyes meet and I feel hopeful flood my body. Zero. I'm coming to help you, Seven. Don't die on me. You have to survive. Remembering all of the kindness that I've encountered... The loving way that I was embraced by my teammates at FaZe. I start to tear up. Honey, just because your teammates were nice to you and everything does not mean that FaZe is any more or less corrupted, like, as a whole. I mean, there's good people in bad places everywhere. Like, how can we be so blind and dumb? There may be a lot of terrible things going on at FaZe, but I believe there are also truly kind people there. I know because they've helped me. I can't just abandon them or what I committed to all of a sudden. I need to find out the truth for myself. And if there are things at phase that needs to be changed, maybe. Maybe I should be someone who helps change things. But Hyuna, they think you're a traitor. I just can't believe things are that black and white. They would train all of us, take care of us, and then just throw us away like garbage. Please understand, Nish. I can't just jump to the conclusion that FaZe is all bad and needs to be destroyed. Or Kairos is all good. I mean, that's true, but... Things are obviously made way more complicated than that. And you should, you should, of all people, should know that. I'm the type of person that has to find out exactly what's going on for myself. Nish looks at me hopelessly and heaves a deep sigh. He rubs his eyes tiredly and I feel guilty for worrying him so much. If there's anything that I learned during our leader training... Is that we should never take sides blindly. We need to try and look with our own eyes and minds, open our hearts, and try to understand others. Only they can find our own truth. You're right. God, I know you're right. I did the same thing for myself. I can't just force you to listen to my perspective. You need to develop your own. I get it. At least. Stay here for a little while. Get to see Kairos firsthand. Everything is crazy over at phase right now anyway, and you're hurt pretty badly. Please, sis. 
I'm so scared for you. Stay here a little while. For me? I feel a twinge of pain and I smile bittersweetly as I remember how I can never resist Nish's puppy dog eyes. I'll at least do that. Good call. It'll give you the opportunity to get our side of the story anyway. See it with your own eyes. I nod and look at Zero to see what he thinks about all this, but his face is as inscrutable as ever. After that, Zero and I decided to leave Temperance and Nish to their work. We've apparently allowed, we're apparently around to walk around the school, but not leave it without permission. They don't trust us with their location, understandably. With nothing else to do for the moment, we decided to head upstairs to get a feel for the building. Wow, this place is huge. I look at Zero beside me, who hasn't said much, even for him. He looks deep in thought. I wonder if he'll share that with them with me. I notice that his fists are still clenched tightly. Zero. Then there's a tightness around my throat. Uh-oh. My hand immediately goes to my throat only to find an arm there. Someone's attacking me. Someone's attacking me. I look at Zero only to see two people struggling to restrain him as well. What the hell? We were tricked? I guess I'm the fool for believing we'd be safe in an enemy territory. Before either of us can do anything, a woman appears behind Zero. The two men holding Zero are pulled away by her at once. Then they're kicked into the wall so hard it cracks. I barely have time to process what's happening before she stepped over to me and accosted my attacker. She roughly pulls the man away from me, then rams his head into the nearest wall. Breathing heavily, I look from the men on the floor to the woman. I finally get a good look now that she's standing still. Oh my gosh, she is just heavenly. Wow. I suck in a breath at the woman's elaborate attire and imposing presence. I glance over at Zero, but he seems to be staring at her warily. There's no way she isn't a Kairos leader. By the process of elim elimination, she must be. Are you two okay? Huh? I'm really sorry about that. There's no way they should have attacked you. They weren't Kairos people for sure. I believe that they belong to FaZe. FaZe? I think that's what happened back there when you were both attacked too. Artemis and Icarus run up to us from nowhere. Yikes, what the hell happened here, Pre? Pre? So she is the High Priestess. I don't know, but we're definitely going to find out. You'd better. This is a disgrace to me and a disgrace to Kairos. To me as well. Tell Vesper what happened and let me know what they think. I'm trusting you to get to the bottom of this as soon as possible. Remember, Pre, you trusted me to become your right hand. I will let you down. The High Priestess nods and turns, to her, turns on her heel facing us. I understand you two are probably feeling like you don't trust me, but if you two don't mind, I'd like to speak with you in private. I look at Zero, but he answers without looking at me. Okay. Please follow me. I feel pretty dis distrustful after that last attack. Zero follows her down the hallway before I can say anything. I don't really have a choice but to run and catch up. The High Priestess, or Pre, as Artis calls her, takes us up to the roof of the school. Man, this would be a perfect place for an ambush. However, Zero looks pretty relaxed, so I decided to try and at least pretend to chill. At least the view is nice. The priestess turns to face us. I'm so happy to finally get the chance to talk to you. I really want to explain what's been happening and clear up any misunderstandings. First of all, those agents that attacked you back there, back at the meeting were actually phase operatives in disguise. They weren't Kairos people. Sorry, but I just find it so hard to believe. Why would FaZe try to kill us? Honey, they just said that they thought of you as a traitor. Stop being so fucking dumb. It seems that the last intel is pointing to there being a split off FaZe loyalist extremist. We've been watching them for a while, but it seems like they finally made a move. Really? I lived there, but I never noticed anything like that. Are you sure you haven't seen or experienced any hostility from people at FaZe? Well... The bitch on the roof. In the distance, I see one of FaZe's staff I saw in the elevator a few days ago with four. I'm trying to decide if I should walk over to them or not, when I see Suyun shove a bag at four. He reaches out to take it, but Suyun lets go before his hands are completely on it, and it hits the floor. They both stare at it for a moment, with Suyun making no motions to pick it up. Four reaches down to grab the bag without a word. Najid wasn't available to do your park run for you. You should really be thanking me for even doing this. I don't like that creepy woman any more than you. Yeah, thanks. 
Four's voice is dripping with sarcasm, but the woman doesn't seem to catch it at all. Is that everything? Her voice shakes as she rubs her arm. I'm sure you understand I have no desire to be around some mentally unstable killer. Go, I'm not keeping you. Suyun practically runs from Four, headed in my direction. Hey, isn't that Dr. Park's golden boy? You mean, the big experiment she's so smug about? I immediately recognize one of the women as the one who tried to stop Five from infiltrating, but I don't know the other one. I set my arrow to scan her identity. Identification complete. Kong Su Young. Phase administrative staff. I didn't know she actually let him out of the lab. Yeah, I heard he joined Phantom Alpha recently. Wait, are they talking about Zero? I glance up at him, but he won't be my eyes. I can tell his body is stiff, though. The elevator stops at a floor. I want so badly for us to get off here, but it isn't the one we need. Really? So he's one of the ones that saved us? Yeah, I think so. I guess the experiment wasn't such a failure this time. I find myself stiffening at this comment. What the hell? Do they really think he doesn't hear them? Oh. Such a failure this time. I find myself stiffening at this comment. What the hell? Do they really think he doesn't hear them? I heard he's unstable, though. Is it really safe for him to be rocking around like that? Most phase operatives are freaks. I don't really see the difference, really. I'm sure you know this already, but things are in chaos at phase right now. Going back would probably be a death sentence, especially in an injured state. Especially for Five, since they think he's a traitor. That's right. These phase loyalists are likely not going to tolerate anyone who doesn't agree with their doctrine. And, right now, the outcome of the coup d'etat is unknown. Who knows who will be in control of FaZe soon? I can't help but think of Nine. Team Dev, stand down. Huh? Nine? We both start to slow down at Nine's commanding voice, but neither of us stop running. Why? Nine's voice is strained and breaking as he says the next words. Sudden orders from the top. They say to leave it. You know, I'm breaking off. I don't know how how good this actually is to doing all these flashbacks. I kind of almost wish they would have left this out, but we'll keep going. Leave it? Leave five to die? What the fuck? I know I'm sorry. I'm not sure what this is all about, but I'm standing in the general's office right now. This is an order even I can't override. It's definitely true that everything's a mess. I've already decided to take advantage of your hospitality for a little longer. For Nishin 5's sake, if nothing else. If I can, I'll try to convince Nish to leave this life and find out more about Five's family. Even if this situation is weird and risky, it's worth it. I just hope they won't think I've gone AWOL. I should at least try to contact HQ when I can. You're not ready to make your decision yet. I understand. But there will come a time very soon when you will need to choose sides. You say it as if you know it for a fact. Do you know something? Just intuition. High Priestess turns to Zero, then, staring as if she could see into his soul. She brushes back her cloak, and her aura changes entirely. Zero, I want to say it again. That I'm so happy to finally meet you. She inclines her head, seemingly a little awkward. He looks back in surprise. Uh, PZIC109 was your name once, wasn't it? Zero's eyes go even wider. I'm sorry to drop this on you, but I think you need to know this now. I always promised myself that I'd tell you as soon as I saw you. PZIC0709 was... She was... Killed. What? Gem? I'm sorry. They told you she was missing, but... She ran away from the Zero Initiative, only to be killed by FaZe. I personally confirmed it. I'm sorry. Zero looks down, staring at nothing particular. Precautiously approaches him, closing some of the distance between them. I've been wanting to tell you this for years, but you can leave FaZe. Zero looks up, shaken. You don't have to be subject to Dr. Park's ambitions anymore. You don't have to be her pet project. You don't have to be hurt or used anymore by FaZe. Please take this opportunity to leave. The wind blows between them. It seems obvious to me that the High Priestess has some kind of history with Zero. I can't imagine what, but she seems to know his past at least, even if he doesn't know her. It's because of this that I am hesitant to jump in, 
Besides that, I can sense that her concern for him is genuine. She at least believes what she's saying is true. And judging by what those women said in the elevator, I can't deny that anything to do with Dr. Park is true. Only Zero knows all of his past. Maybe this isn't my place. I have been unsure about con continuing at phase for a long time. The revelation shocks me to the core, but I don't interrupt the two. Zero looks up at Pree suddenly. I've thought about it probably a thousand times growing up, but I can't just leave. They'd find me even if I did. You wouldn't be the first person to escape from Faze. Temperance and de Devil did it. They're here, safe and trying to heal. Pree's voice takes on a soft tone as she hesitantly touches Zero's wounded hand. Faze didn't tell you to draw those designs on your jacket, did they? Faze didn't tell you to get that tattoo on your neck either, right? Huh? No. It reminds me of Kairos' symbol, and I'm sure you chose it for the same reason I chose it for Kairos. That tattoo is proof that we were never going to be controlled by anyone. That tattoo is a sign that you were always going to hold on to hope. Hope for a better, brighter future, not imprisoned inside of a decision you made as a child. Not caged inside cold, unfeeling walls, but under endless blue skies. It's proof that you were always meant to fly free. That's what I established Kairos for. For those who reject the change of society. For those who want to find their own truth. For those who want to fly free. I watch Zero cautiously as he looks into Pri's eyes, judging her words. I decided to speak, finally. Everyone else is still back at phase zero. They care about you. They're your precious teammates, and you're theirs. I just know that everyone's waiting for us to come back. I'm certain that all of what Seven is saying is true. Pri looks at me, then. But it doesn't mean that Phase is a healthy place for Zero to be. It doesn't mean that the pain from constant surgeries and endless training, that the pain and isolation he must have felt as a child has to continue on forever for the sake of others. Being a mage, mage, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a path Zero chose as a child, knowing the pain and burden it would cause him. How could a child know anything of that world? And how could anyone have known how things would turn out? But now he has the choice because I'm giving it to him. Pri looks back at Zero. I promise to protect you, should you choose to leave FaZe. Now, it really is your choice. Will you fall or fly? She reaches a gloved hand out to Zero. Zero stares at her hand, then at her eyes. Then he takes it. I want to fly. Free. Oh. Holy moly. Okay, that was kind of surprising, but kind of not. Do we get a... I wonder if we're going to get a uh, cutscene at the end. I guess we'll see. Do we? <gasps> we do! <laughs> Where are you going, eh? I casually grab the collar of Faye's staff member and pull him close to me. Get your hands off me, you Cairo sympathizing pig. The man attempts to punch me in the face, but I simply grab his hand before he can. Then I twist his arm behind his back in one motion, pressing him up against the door. Nine is going to be worried. Eh, well, I'll explain it in a minute. <laughs> Get off me! Is this where you want to die, pal? At the word die, my mind goes back to seven and zero. It was a doom to start with, but I feel a personal sense of guilt. They were my responsibility. I was close by. I should have been able to save them. I especially feel guilty about Seven. The girl has had nothing but bad luck since she got here. The Kairos invasion, getting stabbed, getting punished, and having to see Ten work in person would be enough for one lifetime. But it's all happened in a matter of weeks. Yet she keeps on smiling. She keeps trying her best with her head held high. She never pries, and she just does her best. Feels like you could tell her anything, even to me. I absentmindedly let the guy go as he sobs no in response to my question. He runs off, but I barely notice. I find, my smell s I find myself smiling at her charming and bright presence in my memories. Surprised at myself, I chuckle and tell Nine through the door that everything is okay. Seven, I hope you're okay. I make a vow to get to know her better when we see each other next. 
That promise will somehow keep the hope going. <laughs> you can view other endings depending on your chosen partner in chapter. Okay, got it. Okay, choose the DLC or you can go back to chapter 4 to view its premium content. Okay. Okay, so this is our end. We got Six's Roots. Um, it's a whole lot of shit. I'm really hoping Book 2 comes at some point. Um, if they can make that happen, that'd be great. I think I'll do some videos on the other routes, which I won't have the full story like I have here. I'm just going to do the choices for each of the candidates and put it together in a video and just see the outcomes and stuff of that. Um, so be looking out for that, and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and I will see you all again later. Bye-bye!